The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This week I attended the annual Top Ten Christmas Hymn Sing at St. Mark's Church and School in Upland, where my husband Keith is director and headmaster. The first through eighth graders cast votes for their favorite Christmas carols, and the last day before their Christmas break, they sing the winners. So, we started with number 10. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. By the time we had counted down to number two, the anticipation was heightening. Their joy was irrepressible. They clapped and danced, doing a kind of holy wave as they sang, Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Now, I tried to imagine what could possibly top the songs we had already sung, you know, like Silent Night and things like that. And much to my surprise, their number one pick returned us to Advent. Giddy with pure joy, the students from grades one through eight acted out the lyrics as they sang, people look east and sing today, love the Lord is on the way. It goes a little bit more like this, angels announce with shouts of mirth, him who brings new life to earth, set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, for love, the Lord, is on the way. The two women in today's gospel story are not looking east. They are looking at each other in amazement. If we understand Christians to be those who witness that Jesus is Lord, then Mary was the first and Elizabeth a close second. Elizabeth's six-month pregnancy is now obvious, but Mary's not so much. Yet their encounter gives us a snapshot of how to give and to receive grace. Grace is hard to accept sometimes. If you have ever complimented someone and ended up in a dispute, you know what I'm talking about. Something as simple as, wow, I really love those shoes, turns into a disclaimer about the age, the style, the comfort level. They're so last season. You ever had that happen? (laughs) Or perhaps you have encountered someone so humble that they reject kindness, grace, love, blessing, as though they are not worthy to receive even the simplest of life's pleasures. And there is another side also, the pain of offering a gift to someone who refuses to acknowledge or accept it. The pregnancies in today's story are powerful signs of grace, of possibility. New life stirs within, even though, at least for Mary at this point, it is still undetected on the surface. Grace is the gift we are given on this fourth Sunday in Advent. Grace to accept without reservation. Grace to see potential without judgment. Grace to willingly step into the mystery 
without preconditions. Grace to hold out hope without any solid proof or facts supporting it. Just hope. By most standards, Elizabeth's credentials make her seem a much better candidate for the role designated to Mary, the role of bearing God. Elizabeth is the wife of a priest, after all, and she is a descendant of Aaron. And, of course, she is married. And according to her culture, she has been hugely blessed. We remember another woman thought to be barren, Sarah, the mother of generations, whom God has hugely favored with a child in her old age. But along comes Mary, who seems all wrong to be the mother of God. She is too young, too inexperienced to give birth to the Savior who will come to his people and set them free. And she is not married. But none of this matters because she and Elizabeth seek common ground rather than their differences. They make evident what has already been done. And the unthinkable, the impossible, the improbable becomes a bridge to one another. And it can happen for us, too. We may be pregnant or we may be raising children. Perhaps we are struggling and married or struggling and single. We may share a recent frightening diagnosis or a reduced job status. We may be dealing with the illness or perhaps even the death of a family member or a loved one. On Friday, Keith and I also attended a Christmas gathering for parents of murdered children. This group meets in the St. Mark's Parish Hall every month, and then in the month of December, they hold a Christmas gathering. And this yearly gathering is intended as a reprieve for those who say they struggle with their own life sentences. The place was packed with people of all ages, all races, every social status. As each family arrived, they received a candle and an ornament bearing the photo of their loved one. Each brought something for a potluck meal together. Afterwards, each family had an opportunity to take a turn at the microphone and to share a memory or a story about their loved one, or just to say their name. Ask the parent of a murder victim, and they will tell you that they can go for years without ever hearing anyone even say the name of their child. After the memory, the families trimmed a Christmas tree bathed in white lights with the ornaments. They lit the candles. It has become a familiar ritual for them, a way of saying one of the moms told me that though we may be wounded in this life, through time together, through community and grace, our wounds are filled with light. One mother, whose son was murdered in 1980, still could not bring herself to get up in front of the group and to talk about him, even after 35 years. So another mother of yet another murdered son stepped in and did it for her. We see this same kind of compassion in today's story, the first miracle is Elizabeth's pregnancy. The second is Mary's. And the third, that Elizabeth accepts God's grace without preconditions. No judgment, no comparisons. This is not about her, and she really is okay with that. God is about to be born in her kinswoman, not her competition. She invites us to do likewise to see the God potential in everyone without precondition, without reservation, to offer support, help, and hope. Elizabeth's acceptance helped to birth Mary's song of freedom that we heard in, in the canticle that was sung in place of the, of the psalm today. And we can discover one another's songs and help each other sing them, and in the process, we just may learn how to sing our own.
like a kind of holy chain letter, you know? C.S. Lewis once compared living faith to an experience he had inside a dark tool shed. The sun was shining brilliantly outside, but inside only a small sunbeam could be seen through a crack at the top of the door. As he looked at the beam of light, he could see flecks of dust and dirt floating about. Looking at the beam this way made everything else darker by comparison. But when he moved so the, so the beam fell on his eyes, everything changed. The tool shed disappeared, and through the crack above the door, he saw leaves and blue sky, and a million miles away, the blinding sun itself. He no longer saw the beam. He was in it. And the object of his vision was blinding, not because of the absence of light, but because of the intense presence of it. Former presiding Bishop Catherine Jefford Shorey has often spoken about hope, the kind of countercultural, death defying hope that kept slaves alive on these shores, the kind of hope that sustained those in the death camps at Dachau and Auschwitz, the kind of hope that keeps many Palestinians today living, working, and going to school, the kind of hope that sustains the homeless and the jobless. It comes in a plate filled, a job found, coats and socks given to the homeless. It comes in Eucharist and in forgiveness, in encouragement to put shame aside and apply for food stamps. It comes in a society where justice means that everyone has enough. It involves, she has said, a making evident that which has already been done. This hope leads us to abundant life, to intimacy with God, to bearing God within us for the life of those nearest us, whether stranger or family, for the life of the world. It means taking the whole package of Christ, not just his birth, not just his death or his ministry or his resurrection, but all of him. I want to follow the Jesus who descended into hell, the one who turned hell upside down, looking for Judas, Bishop Catherine said. She said, I want to follow the Jesus who went to the graveyard and who invited Lazarus back into life. I want to follow the Jesus who gave hope to the thief on the cross next to him. I want to follow the Jesus who was willing to be taught by a foreign woman that he was supposed to give her good news, too. And she said, I want to follow the Jesus who hung out with all the wrong people and challenged all the right people to re-examine their categories. Elizabeth's greeting today is hope, the very lifeblood of it for Mary. She helps Mary learn to sing her own song. It is the song of the child for whom we wait. It is her song. It is our song. The song of the proud and powerful who will be relieved of their swelled heads. She sings for the brokenhearted who will be comforted, for the hungry who will be filled with good things. She sings for the rich who will be sent away empty to make room in them for more than money can buy. She sings for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for Hagar, for Sarah, and Rebekah. She sings for you and for me, for every son and daughter who fears, who fears that God has forgotten the promise to be with us forever, to love us forever, to give us fresh and endless life. Mary sings of the God who becomes flesh to show us what love and real life look like. Suddenly and unexpectedly, God comes to us in the midst of our troubled and uncertain times. We are wounded in this life, wounded in the heart, and through time and grace, our wounds are filled with light. On this last Sunday before Christmas, 
We are given the gift of grace and the capacity to see it without evidence, to receive it without preconditions, to love one another as we love ourselves. And together, we are witnesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today. For love, the Lord, is on the way. Amen.